Hello, and welcome to show number 11 of Global Perspectives with Dr. Michael Lightman, where we discuss what's happening in the world today. Hello, Dr. Lightman. Shalom Nikulam. Hello, everyone. Today's topic is a very explosive one, potentially, and it is the evolution of hate. This very deep and, and, and fundamental emotion and part of human nature, maybe the basis of human nature. Um, there has always been hate. It is human nature. Even the Bible tells us that the inclination of a man's heart is evil from his youth. So we can't really expect much else from people. But it seems as though in the past five years or so, there has been a, an intensification of hatred around the world. Um, there are countless examples of growing hatred. Uh, you have the Brexit uh, uh, of, of um, the UK from the EU. You have the reluctance of the EU countries to help each other during the coronavirus crisis. Um, you have uh, the Russia-Ukraine war and all the tensions going on there. You have um, tensions between the U.S. and China and the trade war that's going on there, escalating tensions between North and South Korea, uh, even clashes, military clashes between India and China lately. And in Spain, again, the tensions are rising between uh, the Spaniards and the Basques. And there are many more examples of growing hatred, growing tensions uh, between countries and within countries. And indeed, perhaps the most notable example of, uh, of hatred is what is going on currently in the U.S. Since the 2016 elections, there has been an ongoing process of division of the American society. Democratic versus Republicans, Black Lives Matter versus white supremacists, progressives versus the police, and the number of crimes, of, of hate crimes, is growing every year. Uh, from year to year, we can see an increase in that. And of course, especially against the Jews, but not only. So my first question before we get into current affairs is that we don't see hatred um, anywhere in nature except in human beings. Animals don't hate each other. So it is a uniquely human vice. So what is the root cause mm -hmm. that only humans hate each other? and do so with such passion. First of all, because envy, lust, honor, hate, all of these egoistic emotions, they all grow in a person all the time. We can't say that cats that lived 200 years ago and today's cats are worse. However, human beings that lived 200 years ago and today, surely today they're worse, and we see it according to our history. The measure to which from one generation to the next we want to fight with more cruel weapons, with greater efforts, how incapable we are of forgiving each other. We see how kids that in the past, you know, they used to play around in the backyard. Today they don't have that. Today everyone really has to be against the other. And it's all because all of nature's laws, all the laws, laws of nature are getting this kind of characteristic that this is how they are besides human nature. Man's inclination is evil from his youth. That um, everything in nature is pretty much static and only human nature Again. keeps growing. Or the hatred in human nature, which is it? No, not only the hate, but in general. Anything in human nature is developing from generation to generation and even throughout his lifetime. Okay, but why is there so much hatred? It says about it that a small calf is like a grown-up bull, that everything that exists in a bull exists in a calf. However, a human being that is a newborn and the person that you'll have in 20, 30, 50 years, it's a tremendous difference. Why is there hatred 
in, in, in humans. Why do people hate each other? Animals don't hate each other, and people do. So why is, it, why is human nature so full of hate? People, that hate, people hate each other because they were given this feeling of hate, rejection, alienation, a suffering as a result of all of their relationships in order for them to correct this. And only man can correct his own nature. And why is it growing all the time? In order for a person to see that unless he corrects his own nature, he plunges into such problems and troubles that he'll have no choice. And therefore he has to correct it. So the hatred is growing so that we see that we don't have a choice but to correct it? Again. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um There's, there's, there's a bit more to that, because we can see, if, if we try to, to draw a diagram of hatred, we can see that over time, hatred is increasing more rapidly. It's like an exponential diagram, kind of like the, the, the COVID uh, diagram. Yeah. Why is it growing so fast and even increasing throughout the generations over time not only in a single person but in general in all of mankind such an increase in hatred especially in the recent years and even more especially in the recent months because what we've seen in, in the world in recent months is just we have reached the final state the last generation we have reached a generation called the generation of the messiah that is finding out that they're so immersed in hate that eventually they'll cry out for the forces of nature to save us from this because it is not in man's ability to come out of this mutual hate on their own. And this is how we'll be saved by nature. The last generation, the generation of the Messiah? Nature as a whole is integral and global. It's all interconnected like this sphere, a ball in which all of us exist, our entire universe. And therefore, eventually, we have to reach this law where everyone's interconnected, connected together, acting together in order to keep ourselves according to this global law in a mutual way. And here, we're all the time, we all the time have to see that we're still not there in order to show us how much we're not there yet. There's what we call the evil inclination, meaning our desires becoming revealed, showing us all the time where have we not yet achieved the integrality of nature. And really, this approach, this desire, it's good because it shows us where do we have to correct our connections, our relationships for it to become better. But we suffer in the meantime, and thus it's called the evil inclination. If we, if we look at the kinds of, of uh, conflicts that we're seeing, we can divide them generally into three, I would say. You have conflicts between nations. You have conflicts between races. In the past, it was more between religions. Now it's more between races. And you have conflicts between individuals, between people. What's the difference between um, races, between countries, races between uh, hatred between races, and hatred between people? How are they different, if they are, the three types of uh, hates? I'm not engaged in this. I never studied these things, and I really didn't hear or read about this. I think that it's really not important. The main thing is the hate. And love covers all crimes. Meaning, it doesn't matter what kind of hate there is between us. We have to mutually develop a relation of love toward each other. And the wisdom of Kabbalah that I'm engaged in for almost the past 50 years says that we have to 
be engaged in our connection and love covers for all crimes. And it doesn't matter what form of connection. The main thing is that it will be such a connection in which everyone, red, yellow, white, black, doesn't matter who and what, all of us will come together, unite without any differences as human beings. This is what the wisdom of Kabbalah says, and this is what we have to do precisely in our time, in this century, the 21st century. This is the time in which the entire world has to be connected in a good and nice way. Because we, in our egoistic development, have reached a state where if we don't start doing it now, we'll simply destroy each other. Isn't there a way we can diminish the hatred? I don't think so. I also don't think that it's the correct thing. We don't have to decrease the hate, the, the bad, the evil, the hatred, the bad, the evil, all these negative forms, they exist in order for us to put together a good, correct system vis-a-vis -vis to all of that hate and everything, and then these two systems, the hate and the love, or rejection and connection, and so on, all of these things, they will work together in order for us to understand how to better and better cope, deal with the hate and the love, rejection, connection, and this way we will reach a round, integral world. That it's impossible that there's good without bad. I understand. You're saying we should build two... Um, we already have the hatred. And opposite that, we should build um, an equally strong system of love. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It keeps growing all the time. True. Yeah. And upon it, we have to cover it with love. But every time it grows, it's not covered by love. We have to cover it. Okay, so what if at some point it becomes so strong, like we can see today all over the world, it, it, it might become so strong that uh, people will just de destroy the world before we, before we have time to cover it. No, no, that's incorrect. We don't have to think that, you know... There's no plan, whatever happens, happens, that's incorrect. We have to work correctly in a systematic way in order to cover every hate with love. I'm studying these things for over 40 years now, and I'm telling you that there is such a method, it's called the Wisdom of Kabbalah. It's also on our website, free for download. You have all the sources that were written thousands of years ago and until this day. And we have the power and the ability to correct all of this hate and every bad thing that erupts between people and to bring them to connection and love and good. In recent uh, months, um, there has been a lot of discussion on a specific kind of hatred, which is racism. There have been demonstrations and protests against racism all over the world. Um, it's almost as if uh, we're trying to undo racism or try to kind of uh, compensate for it with... with uh, with counter-racism, I don't know how to define it anymore, but my question is, first of all, is racism a unique kind of hatred? Why is it appearing now and why is it all over the world? What's so special about racism? Yeah, it was always there, only people weren't willing to go against racism. And now the time has come where, for example, the Afro-Americans, they have grown. 
they already understand that they can't keep silent, keep, can't keep quiet anymore. They have pride. And besides, they see that today they're given the ability, the force to do it. And so they arrange these eruptions. One of the most... Um, <clears throat> One of the cruelest manifestations of uh, racism is uh, is the racism that we saw in the previous century against Jews, um, with anti-Semitism that eventually escalated to the Holocaust. Is there a difference between the racism we're seeing now, or racism in general, and anti-Semitism, meaning racism against Jews? First of all, anti-Semitism didn't end anywhere or ever. My question is, is there a difference between racism, general racism, and specifically anti-Semitism? No. 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 Not at all. Because against any kind of racism that you have, between the different races, nations, nationalities. It's a normal kind of racism. It's a racism that comes and goes. And it exists all the time here and there that it comes and goes. Whereas a racism that brings anti-Semitism, this is something completely different. It's above nature. It's eternal, unchanging, and it's a kind of racism that you can't cure in any way. What does it mean that it's above nature? Above nature, it means that Jews are hated not because of their color, not because of any other rational reason. Jesus or something because of that, then okay, those that don't believe and aren't a part of that at all, hate them too. Meaning hate toward Jews is above corporeal nature. It comes from the spiritual nature. Because Jews have a method of how to rise above our entire nature and to be as one man in one heart, all together, all of humanity, and through our connection of all human beings to also attain the connection with the Creator. If all the people unite, then there will be no racism. Yes, but again, this is the problem, that hate toward Jews comes from the self-hate that Jews f feel or have toward themselves. I don't want to get into that. I understand that today it's, uh, we're talking about normal... Probably no greater hatred than the hatred for the Jews, at least... Uh, no oldest hatred. Yeah, hatred the, uh, uh, right, but it's unrelated to other kinds of hate. Um, you're saying that we can't diminish hatred. We only need to increase uh, love. Yes, we have yeah. to build parallel structures, right? Yeah, yeah. true. Okay. Um, every time someone tries to talk about love, he immediately looks naive, he looks like, it looks like he's a little detached from this world, you know, people don't talk about love. So, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't sound honest. When a person speaks about love, it doesn't sound honest. Why don't people believe people who, when they talk about love? And how can we build something w without believing in love? Because our world is entirely built on hate, the desire to control others, to rule others, determined by force. And therefore, those that, as if, say that there has to be something else, he seems childish and unrealistic. So how do we ever build that parallel structure? 
Only by the upper force, a special upper force that we draw for it to control us. Because in nature, besides the force of bad or evil that we feel from our own nature, there's also the force of good that can control us and sustain us, but on condition that we want it. So the time will come due to the suffering and problems and troubles where we will call upon this good force and for it to control us and this way will bring the good force into the world. It's called inviting the Messiah. And then this good force will rule and will get us out of the bad force and will truly be able to connect between us in a good and nice way. Today's hatred, um, and especially we could see that during the lockdown, when, when families were kind of all locked down together, you could see a lot of tensions within families. And sometimes they erupted into all kinds of manifestations of hatred. Um, mm-hmm. what, what can you do when hatred hits you so close, when you hate someone who's supposed to be very close to you, like your brother, your sister, I'm not even talking about parents and children, but let's say, let's begin with brothers and sisters. What do they do if, if they start hating each other? Can they do something about it? Is it TV? It's natural, because we're not used to sitting together, living together, especially in one room or in one small apartment. We can barely, barely stand each other because each of us is very egoistic and individualist, and therefore we have no choice, but only if we will begin to receive a good and correct kind of education that we're all a part of one's soul and that it's worthwhile doing and how can we connect and why should we connect and so on. You have to study and study and learn in a systematic way. People are locked down together already now. They don't have time. And talking about being one soul and all that, that sounds like, you know, what's between this and me? It's un- So what can people do now? Send them shows on the internet, on TV through all the different kinds of media that they can learn from about what does it mean to be together, why, what for, what is this exercise that nature is doing with us, what do we have to do, and you'll see how much they'll understand it very quickly. We have no choice. We have to. We have to invest efforts into it and not say that uh, we can't. In our hands, we have the ability to do everything. What if um, what if I associate with a certain group of people, maybe co-workers, and, um, and at my work, I get along with everyone great, but there's this one person that I can't get along with, and it bothers me. Is there something I can do to get over the hatred toward that person? Then I say, Try to love them. But I hate that person's guts. Try to love him. Why do you hate him? Um, maybe he did something bad to me. Even if he did, why do you think that he did it and he knew and you have to hate him for it? Maybe you were given this feeling in order for you to overcome it and love him. What will I get if I overcome it and, and love that person? By that, you build the system out of the forces that are mutually rejecting each other to forces that are mutually connected by which you become like the Creator. 
Creator is the force of good, the force of connection that exists in the entire world, besides in those areas, emotions, places where our ego reigns. Our ego controls? No. No. There isn't. There isn't. In the in the connection between us, there's no creator at all. We're the very opposite of the creator. How could there be that he exists then? Interesting. Um, I want to ask one last question. Can you give us a one-minute yeah. explanation how we can overcome hatred and build a more caring society for all of us? Hmm. To build a more caring society for all of us, we simply have to take ourselves and to start an, a truth, egoistic truth, and to start working with each other in a good and nice way without paying any attention to our differences, not the color, not anything. Let's start working with each other this way, in a friendly way. If this is how I do it with everyone, then I draw people to myself, I put together my soul. Let's make, let's, let's compete. Uh, who builds his soul more quickly? I mean, Dr. Lightman, I want to thank you very much. Um, apparently, there is a lot more to this topic than we got into. This is just the very tip of the iceberg. Yeah. True, we'll have more talks. I have to think about it. Maybe, maybe we should uh, take parts of it and discuss them more. Um, but again, thank you very much for your perspectives, and uh, we hope to see you all with us next time as we get in more to this topic and other current event topics. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Lightman. Thank you. All the best.